In this video, I'm going to show you how to work with foreign currency purchase orders. We're going to place a purchase order using a foreign currency, we're then going to receive goods on the purchase order, and then finally record payment made to the supplier, including any exchange rate variants. The first thing you need to do is add the currency you need to BrightPearl at Setup, Currencies. Once you've added your currency, click Update Values, and then BrightPearl will go to an exchange rate server to get the most recent exchange rate value. BrightPearl does not update these automatically, so make sure you come back here to click that update button whenever you want to update your currencies. When you create a purchase order, the currency value from here will be copied onto the purchase order itself, and you can change it on a per purchase order basis later. The next thing you need to do is set up a cost price list using that currency, and then assign it to the supplier. So here we've got a euro cost price list using the euro currency. Here's a supplier, or it might be called a vendor in your account, and if I go to the Financial tab, I can see that I've actually set the price list to the Euro cost price list, and the currency to Euros. Don't forget that BrightPearl only has a single currency accounting system, however, even though the purchase order is in the foreign currency. And that means that the financial record and any accounting transactions are always done in your base currency, whatever that happens to be. Because this supplier has been set to Euro currency, you can see that the total on the purchase order is actually in Euros. If I go across to a product record, you can see that we've now got a new tab for the Euro cost price list, and on this price list, I've put 100 euros. Which means that whenever I add that item to a purchase order, it pulls in the Euro price. And here we go, 100 euros. BrightPearl calculates the base value equivalent of this purchase order automatically, so this comes through as $135. You can see the exchange rate has been copied into the purchase order, and if I wanted to change this on a per purchase order basis, I just need to change it in here and hit save. You can only do that until the purchase invoice is received, because as soon as the purchase invoice is received, the base value is put into your accounting system and can't subsequently be changed. The amount you pay the supplier, however, can be different from the amount that's put into the accounting system, and we'll see how to do that shortly. Email or print the purchase order off to the supplier in the normal way. The next thing that usually happens is the inventory arrives. So we're going to find our way to the purchase order and receive inventory. But notice how the price on the purchase order is 100 euros. The inventory value received is actually going to be the dollar or the base equivalent of that. So 135.87. Let's go to receive inventory, where on the right hand side BrightPearl just gives you a reminder of the base value unit cost of this inventory. The purchase order has now been received. An accounting transaction has been made to record the inventory with the net value that you're paying the supplier in your base currency. So let's go and have a look at the general ledger. Where we can see that entry, link to the purchase order. To account for the landed cost of the goods, including any shipping, freight and duty, have a look at the separate video all about landed costs. When the supplier sends you the invoice for the goods, you need to reconcile it against the purchase order. And in this case, we've just got an invoice for 100 euros. So we just need to click Receive Invoice, enter the vendor's invoice reference, choose the invoice date. And if you wanted to retrospectively update existing cost price lists, which will be used only for the next purchase order, you can tick these boxes on the right. The purchase order has now been marked as invoiced. And again, the total of 135.87, the base currency equivalent, is what's been put onto the supplier's account. And you can see that from the Accounting tab. You can also see this on the Accounts Payable screen, or on your aged creditors. When you drop into the Accounts Payable record for this particular supplier, you can see the Euro equivalent, or the foreign currency equivalent, for each of your invoice lines. This is the screen where we handle any changes in exchange rate between the time of receiving the invoice and making the payment. So even though you've received the invoice at $135.87, let's say due to exchange rate variances, you're only going to be paying them $135. Choose the bank account from which you're going to be paying, enter a reference, a memo, check number and so on, and in the To Pay Now box, enter the amount that you're actually going to be paying. We can see that this is not going to clear the invoice, so what we need to do is put any adjustment in the Adjustment column, and in this particular example, it's 87 cents. The sum of those two fully clears the purchase invoice. Entering a value in the Adjustment column also makes this little select menu here appear, which lets you choose where you want to put that adjustment to. 
By default, you'll have an exchange rate gains and losses account in here. Make sure that's selected, and then allocate the payment. So we've now only paid $135, and yet the purchase invoice total of slightly more than that has been fully cleared. To see that transaction, let's go and have a look at the general ledger. Here we can see a purchase payment made from the bank account of $135, clearing a debt of $135.87 and putting 0.87 onto the exchange rate gains and losses. That'll appear on our profit and loss report or income statement. And here at the bottom right we can see 0.87. So just as we recorded the slight underpayment of an invoice to a supplier just now, you can also use this screen to record an overpayment. So take this bottom row, there's an invoice due to the supplier of 348 euros, which converts to 472.83 in terms of our base currency dollars. So let's say we're actually going to overpay it due to exchange rate variance, so that's going to come in at 480. We need to put a minus adjustment in here to make the allocated column go green. In exactly the same way, you allocate this adjustment to exchange rate gains and losses. If you want to make a prepayment or a deposit against a purchase order before the supplier sends you the invoice, then you can do that from the purchase order screen. At the bottom, click Allocate Payment. Make the payment to the supplier in your foreign currency, and then when you know the base currency equivalent, put that in here as the amount paid from the relevant bank account. That'll go through to the accounting system as a negative amount on the accounts payable or aged creditors. It'll also appear on the payment allocation screen here ready to go against the invoice when it's allocated to the purchase order. And don't forget, this is in base currency. Until the invoice is received against the purchase order, there's no need to allocate exchange rate gains or losses, so that's why it's showing exactly $100 here, which is the amount that you've prepaid. Because BrightPearl is a single currency accounting system, the accounts payable or age creditors value on your balance sheet is going to reflect the base equivalent of any open purchase invoices. If you want to revalue your exposure to any foreign exchange changes, then you need to make those journals manually. You can choose which accounts appear on the payment allocation screen when you enter a value in the adjustment column. Go to your accounting chart of accounts setup, create a new accounting code or choose an existing accounting code, and choose yes for allocate discounts to this account. OK, to sum up, the first thing you need to do is add a currency. Then you need to create a cost price list using this currency, then assign the currency and the price list to your supplier, then create the purchase order. The purchase order will be created in the supplier's currency. Then you receive the inventory, and the exchange rate from the purchase order is used to calculate the base currency equivalent value of that inventory. The next thing you need to do is receive the purchase invoice, and again, the exchange rate from the purchase order is used to calculate the base equivalent. And then finally what you need to do is allocate any payment made, either an overpayment or an underpayment, with any adjustments for foreign exchange gain and loss. That takes us to the end of the video where we see how to deal with foreign currency purchase orders.